Hello then, everyone, and welcome to Leo Gang Salzburgerland. We're here for the UCI Mountain Bike Cross Country Olympic World Cup, the under 23 men's race, about to get underway here today in the sunny Austrian Alps, the third round of that series. And we are in for quite a treat. My name is Rick McLaughlin. Joining me today is, of course, Bart Brenchens, the original Olympic gold medalist. Bart, good day to go racing here in Austria. Yeah, it's a beautiful day. Blue sky, we have a beautiful venue. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward uh, to this uh, category, the under 23 men. We were just discussing in the booth before we went live how this is arguably one of the most unpredictable races off the UCI Mountain Bike World Series in that we have some of the best young racers in the world lining up on the start line and who knows what can happen. Paul Schell from Germany. This man, so strong early in the year, would like a big performance today. Oliver Solvoy. Here is the overall points leader's jersey then. And it belongs to Dario Lilo. So good last time out in Lenzerheide, Lilo. What has he got in store for us today? Well, one of the stars of the short track race earlier in the weekend, Tom Schellikens from Holland, fifth in that race on Friday evening. And so, someone who many people are tipping to go well here today. Well, the big man, Carter Woods from Canada. Giant Factory off-road team, fourth in short track the other evening. All smiles, ready to go racing, Carter Woods riding his way into a bit of confidence and form in this season. Luke Vidman for Thomas Maxson. One of the stars of Swiss mountain biking yet to emerge. Riley Amos second in the short track the other night for Trek Factory Racing. One of the real danger men on this front row. The course should suit him this afternoon. And here he is then, Adrian Boisci for Trinity Racing MTB, the Frenchman. Won his second short track of the year on Friday evening. Yeah, we spoke about uh, Sophia Heavy Peterson. She won the under 23 women, uh, women uh, category, but her brother Gustav Peterson, actually, he's not here. We skipped this race. Sorry we for that. This we race. was wrong in that. Uh, it's maybe a show. sensible move. <laughs> 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 Maybe. <laughs> Given how well his sister's going at the minute. Adrian Boisci then. Amos, Fidman, Wood, Shellikens, Lilo, Solvoy, Shell, Blackmore. And Zad Lukel. Are your front row? Alexander Hudima from the Ukraine. Second row start. Yeah, Bjorn Riley for track factory racing in the mix as well. Likes this place. So yeah, I don't really know what the, the politically correct way of putting this is, Bart. We just discussed on there. These are all fired up young men who are ready to go racing. <laughs> it is. The depth of this category is uh, huge. Uh, difficult to say um, who is the strongest. At, at least you have to be uh, you have to be a strong climber. This is a climber's course, old school course. Uh, the technical the decisions are not too technical, but it all comes down here to uh, some good legs. And we did see in the under 23 women's race as well that it is possible to come back through the pack. Junya Kaluri rode herself back into this one just through. She managed to, I guess, uh, swerve the extremely fast start, as you can see, 20 degrees Celsius outside our booth. Yeah, right now the conditions are still perfect. They are under starters orders and we'll wait for the lights to turn green here in Leo Gang Salzburger land. And green they go, and we are racing here at the UCI Martin Bike Cross Country Olympic World Cup. Dario Lilo just getting crowded out by Carter Woods in the National Champions jersey of Canada in the middle of your screen. And there is a faller early doors, one of the Canadian riders. 
only crossed the line now, but we need to rejoin the front of this one and see who's going to lead them up onto this start loop for the first time. Yeah, and the start loop a bit different from uh, the original lap. And it is Amos and Shellikens and Sovoy at the front of this one. And see how fast they go out of the saddle the whole time, accelerating. So the start loop will help to thin this big pack of riders out before they head out onto the lap proper. Very, very similar to the short track race as Matis Gray. Yeah, Matis Gray from... Not no, an no, ideal it was, No, it was Canadian, Canadian riders, uh, not Matis Gray. I think it is not him, I thought. No. Amos at the front of the pack at the minute, driving yeah. him up this hill. Tom so Schellekes. Amos, Schellekes, Solvoy, Lilo, Rectal. And see the depth of this field, how many riders. It's a big, big field, this. 180 riders, 30 different nations. All on the start loop at the moment. And the start loop a bit different from the, the original lap. To spread out the field. Yep, finding space not easy out there. And this part where they are right now, it's steep. Also, this has been in the short track from last Thursday for these young men. Boishi, Boishi at the front of this one though, in some clear air, third place now for the Frenchman. Yeah, and the riders, they know where they, they have to be in a good position when it comes down to the first descent. There's still a bit of time to ride into this race, but still a good position is really necessary all the time. Excuse me, Boishi back further in the group there than I thought just from that shot. Really, Amos, who's leading, Tom Skellig is behind him. Tom Schellick is on the hardtail bike as well. We don't get to see them much, but here in Liagang, yeah, there are a few well, knocking about. Well spotted, uh, Rick. Uh, yeah, you yeah, see, yeah. had the eyes <laughs> tested ahead of this one, Bart. Yeah. It's nice to see also some uh, hardtail bikes. Uh, we gonna, see more in the... I was going to ask you, you'll enjoy this. You're a hardtail I mean, fan. Yeah, we, we all started on a hardtail bike when we yeah. were young. So, uh, and this course suits... It, it's, it's built for hardtail. There uh, we see it there, right. Shellikens. So what we are referring to there is but, a bike without but, a suspension unit on the rear, so a fixed rear wheel. But these days, actually these riders, they're riding only full suspension bikes all the time, so they're not used to ride a hardtail bike. Even yeah, to switch immediately to a hardtail bike, yeah, you have to get used to it as well. So and uh, Tom Skellikens uh, looks like uh, he's used to it. Um, he's prepared for this race. And uh, leading now at the number six on his bike, a hardtail bike for him. Yeah, and in case you are wondering at home why Tom Shellikins would choose a hardtail bike, that brings us nicely on as we see Riley Amos punch past him at the top of this absolutely soul sapping climb. It is the sheer amount of climbing on the course here in Leogang. But I'm wondering uh, if he can follow the, the, the other riders around him in the descents, because the descents are not too technical, but they are fast. They're and extremely and, 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 choppy as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, Especially that middle uh, with all the roots. But uh, yeah, if he knows about it, he can uh, accelerate immediately uh, in the next climb again. Yeah, cross-country racing really is now about the complete package of being able to climb quickly, but also attack on the descents. And the climbs here in Leogang, absolutely savage as they head out. You'll see more of that first one when they head out on the lap proper after the start loop, but... It looks like Rayleigh Amos is in for a good race, leading now from the beginning. They go straight up and then they, within a matter of bike lengths, turn straight back down again. We laughed during the women's under 23 race at the course here resembling a capital M. But it really does, it's straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down and... Shellikins will have to pick his lines carefully throughout this race on that hardtail because no way for the for the back wheel to get up and over those routes. This is the last pinchy climb uh, before the finish. Uh, it's an interesting part of the course also when it comes down uh, to the last few laps. Uh, the only opportunity for the riders to overtake each other because after that they have to do these off-camera uh, Big corners on the grass, on the ski slope, and then after that the jump section, and then followed by a lot of very tight um, high-speed turns. The bridge, and then the finish is there, so not that much time to overtake each other. And riders, they will know it, they will try and find out during the race. There is a little, little group forming at the front of this one. Out of my commentary booth window, I have just seen Valentina Hull 
heading out for a bike ride, uh, the young Austrian, possibly earlier, to earlier today than I would have expected to see her up and about after oh, her... She uh, has been partying yesterday. I after, well, <laughs> you, you said a part, not me, but... Um, Till three o'clock, <laughs> the music was so loud, I was sleeping in our, uh, in our team area in the camp. For, yeah, it was big, crazy. big, big day for the Austrians here at the downhill yesterday. Absolutely incredible scenes. Check out the highlights for that when you can. As Bart said, the party went on until but amazing early to see in the morning. It, like uh, the national heroes winning the yeah. home, home race, uh, their hometown race. It is, and we talked about it a bit in the under 23 women's as well. It can just inspire that next generation. I'm not saying it's going to be, we're going to turn up the next race in Val de Sole, but. The difference in between maybe Rayleigh Amos on the full suspension, Tom Skellige's second place on a hardtail bike. He, He's losing a little bit of uh, time now, not that much, but looks like there's a bit of a difference. A few bike lengths, but yeah. of course that bike is lighter and helps him for faster, to be fast on the climbs. Yep, so Amos will lead them over the line now. And okay. out onto the lap proper as they come together again. Yeah, really Amos, Tom Skellikus. Oliver Solvoy, then we have Lilo, Rechtal, Hudima, Washi, Norway, Vitoni, who really starred last time out in the Lenzo Hyde, only for a last lap disappointment. There he is in the KTM jersey coming yep. through your picture. Great race he had. So. There he is, uh, Gui, uh, number 17. What was shown as uh, a crash uh, at the start, but there was a Canadian rider who was it? Finn Trittler from Switzerland, 28. Yeah. Chalikin's just shouting something over at the mechanic yeah, there. Yeah, he's looking for a bottle. There he is. He was looking for that. Just a mouthful. Sometimes they have to find out also where the staff people are staying. Because okay. for them it's new, uh, also for the first time entering that uh, tag feed zone. And they need to know exactly which position they are. And so it's very, very cloudy in that tech feature, and everybody's fighting over there as well for their sport, for their yeah. place. It's a lot, a lot of support. Of those over the years, elbows out, standing room only. So Tom Skellig is leading now here on this climb. And we get to see just and how And this is the first original lap, the first full, uh, full lap. You can just see as well the... Uh, the loose conditions on the ground, which whenever this climb really kicks and heads upwards, makes it really difficult to get the power down. Yeah, and even a little bit further up this climb, it's more steep and more loose as well. Just as on the road as well, you can see there is somebody sprinting alongside on foot, unable to keep up with the speed. These under 23 <laughs> men going uphill. For a short time it's possible, but not, not for, for very whole. long. Fair play to me, did better than I could do as we head down this little dip and then it kicks back up again. Yeah, immediately it goes up. Tom Skellikus, Rayleigh Amos, Adrian Brushy in third place. But yeah. with a with a hard tail then over a full suspension, will he do anything with that rear tire pressure to try and accommodate that? Probably a little bit more tires with more volume, like 2.4. Okay. A little bit lower uh, tire pressure, yes. Lower. To, to, to lower to, to, to find your uh, your suspension into the tires and also a little bit more volume but uh, yeah it's a different way of riding but uh, at least it, it's so much yeah it's, it's definitely a kilo lighter so it's they're fast when they're fast but you haven't got that margin for error you haven't got that one route that you didn't expect to clatter into the back of the bike yeah, and it can just but, puncture but probably an insert in this rear tire okay so that means uh, it, yeah, it protects against pinch flat. So that's essentially, if you can imagine, a pull noodle inside the rear tire. Yeah, like a foam. Yeah, we're starting to see them use a lot more in cross-country racing now. They just they help that little bit of uh, impact resistance from the, for the tire deforming onto the rim. We jump on board now. Yeah, with Alberto uh, Barroso from Spain, he has the onboard camera. Yep. He needs to get himself to the front of this so we can see more of it, really, doesn't he? Get himself into the first position. Houdima. Yeah. Look Alexander Houdima with the number eight on his back. Solvoy. Yeah, dropping back here. Ole Rektal. Norway. Carter Woods in the Canadian jersey. We saw him do this in the Lenzer Heide where yeah, but he, Carter Woods he had the reserves of energy where he sat at the back of that leading group and then came through towards the end. 
Yeah, but you have to be a strong climber here on this course. You can see uh, Tom Skellig is also, uh, he's pushing hard. This is the highest point of the first climb. Dario Lilo is next, and he's just behind him. Really, Amos, Adrian Brasi, Alexander Hudima. Luke Wittmann. And there is Solvoy. And you see them, it narrows now at the top through the trees, this. And this section over here with your highest heart rate you can reach, you have to make it carefully, precisely. There's not that much space, a lot of obstacles, a lot of technical parts in it as well, the big rocks, roots. This bit, Whisper It, actually looks like quite good fun to ride. Now here we are on the descent, Shellikins on that hardtail, you can see just how rough it is. Yeah, you have to. He, he's taking it more carefully. You see, but you can see Amos just, Amos just opened the brakes up there and just yeah. pinned yeah, just down. Just let it. it go. <laughs> yeah, just why, why not? If you stay here next to the course, you see how fast they are going. They're not braking at all. Not it's at crazy. All. And it's steep. Eight place for Sat, Sat Lukal from uh, the Czech Republic. So it's still Shalikins at the front of this one, the series leader in the red and white jersey, Lilo. The Swiss rider, who did so well last time out in Lenzerheide. Yeah, what a race. He showed us. He's in a great shape. Dario Lilo from Switzerland. He did some road races as well. It seems to be it works out for him. Alexander Rudima in the line jersey. Fourth place. So these lap times that the under 23 men set, they are actually really comparable to that of the elites. Especially in the first few laps, they, they, they do similar lap times. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, sometimes in the morning, uh, the conditions are a bit better to perform. I mean, it's not that warm, but it they expect be, like 28 degrees in this, this afternoon. It could be one thing or the other, can't it? We've seen the under 23 women who are first out of the traps uh, on a cross country Olympic Sunday. Sometimes it can be wetter, it can be more difficult conditions. Other times, the track can actually be perfect for them. The temperature's a little bit lower, like at the minute, I'd say it'd be a lot hotter this afternoon. Yeah, so it, it's it's hard to compare lap times uh, with these, yeah, like the 23 men or the elite men categories. And Tom Skellikas is pushing a lot of effort into this race now on that zigzag climb. It brings the riders to the highest point of this course. From there on, a very steep, Technical descent, a bit longer descent. A little bit of time in that descent to recover. But of course, the adrenaline is high and also the, yeah, they have to be concentrated. It costs a lot of effort as well to make that uh, in a good way. But Shellikins looking strong at the front of this one. Is this a course that will suit him, Bart? And no gloves for him, eh? just... Yeah, that's, that's the way to do it. That's, 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 what I, that's what I'd be up to, no gloves. I did it when I was young, but now I can't yeah. ride with, without anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm a big fan of the no gloves, but maybe not that safe. Ah, not if you if you crash and also for more great, grip, yeah. uh, it, it helps so much to work. My crashes tend to be big enough that it doesn't matter if I've got gloves on or not. <laughs> <laughs> Alexander Hudima is following Adrian Boggi in front of him, Rayleigh Amos in front of him again. It, this could be a course for Hudima today, he likes it. He's in good shape, yeah. yeah. He did altitude training, he loves the climbs. But the field is... Amos, Boashi, Hudima. Strong. The Red Bull, Roots and Rolls. A very different Red Bull Roots and Rolls section compared to what we had in Lenz or Heidel last time out. It was a kind of a lumpy sort of flat section. This time, proper mountain bike. Well, not much room to get past. No, Barroso not, Gomez there, but that rider time. made it work. And you can see just how rough those descents are. So a group of five, and a few riders try to go with them. It's Tom Skellikis and the last rider on the line, jersey, Alexander Hudima. Andreas Vitone now coming to the front at some more speed, and carry that with him on the climb. Riders slowing down now a little bit. Tom Skellikis, look over his shoulder, yeah? It looks good, Shellikis. A lot of riders behind him. Up into the second tech zone, so the riders can get technical assistance at this part of the lap. Only technical assistance that's allowed on this part. And yeah, you see no how, how packed or drink. That, that tech zone is. It's a little bit too small. Is that local for the Czech Republic up in seventh, having a good ride, early doors here, but this climb. We talked about it in the number 23 women's race, just absolutely soul-destroying. Route 66, bullet straight. 
<laughs> and it just goes up and up and up. It never, goes, yeah. It's never steep, but it just increases its gradient just as your heart rate is going through the roof. Yeah, and, and riders are fighting for their position. Alexander Wodima, he likes to be a little bit more to the front. But it's difficult to overtake. Also, too, if you have entering the grass, it's really bad rolling. You have to push so much more uh, effort into it to, to overtake each other. Well, is that Luke feeling good here today? And yeah. he's at the front of this one. For the first time, we see him leading this race. Do you, think, Lukal, do you think this section could be tough enough, Bart, that we see some attacks on it at some stage? An attack on this climb, probably the riders wouldn't do it. I and think it's mentally also very hard. And there he is, come, Jan. So it's straight through the middle. Yeah, straight to the front. What was that about, Bart? They seem to be looking over their shoulders a lot. Yeah, there. and he was carrying on so much more speed, and I think he's feeling strong. He already did a good race last week in uh, Lanzheide, but now leading the race. And here, Oliver Solboy, Solboy is struggling suffering, a little. Yeah, struggling. Really distinctive style, like elbows in, looks big on the bike. And here is Andreas Fitone with the number nine it is on his bike. Fitone deserves so much more out of that race in Lanzheide last week. Yeah, yeah. He had a flat tire on the last lap on that big rock, you remember? And then he had to stop yeah. at, the, at, the tech, at, the, at the tech zone. He lost a lot of time. Look how fast they're descending through this, but you saw Dario Lilo just lifting the front end up there, manually through one of the little bumps. BMX track skills, but essential skills if you want to go fast in mountain biking. Jan Zalukal, strong. Yeah, and then of course kicks. That's that's the enjoyable little... Uh, what a crash of a Alexander crash. Hodima in that corner over there. Yeah, Hodima down on the right-hand side of your screens. I wonder if he can get back on at the bottom of it's, this climb. It's difficult. He has to run, carry on his bike, and there he is. There he is. He went down. You can see it on the left side of his leg. Yeah. A little bit dust. So the condition is so loose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To do. if you take it... Too, too fast, you will go down. It's, that exit it's, out and that left hander, it's, it's really off, off camera off as well. Camera. Yeah. <laughs> Loose gravel. If you lost your front wheel. Here we see. Yeah, and then to start again, that's not easy at all. Oh, Solvoy in a massive gear trying to get up there. But he did it. Edema go uh, back on the way again. I hope he can find his rhythm back because that's the most important. As they come into this really yep. off camber field section. Jan Zatlukal leading. Again, for somebody who likes to ride mountain bikes for fun, not racing, this section, a big grassy field off camber turns, just about as much fun as you can have on a push bike. But today is all about speed. Is that Luca looking good in front here? Actually, yeah, he Martin. does. He really does. Dario Lilo controlling the race in the second place. He has a little bit more experience from the win from last week in Lenzerheide. And wearing the leader's jersey. Tom Schellig is on third place. Really Amos behind him. Adrian Brasi, who won the short track last Thursday. So is that Luco? Kicks things off this year, Nova Meso Namarave with a 14th. The Whitman in the red jersey. How much, if you're if you're faced with a situation like this, Bart, with a rider out front pushing hard, how much energy can you devote to this? How do you, much do you have to go? He might blow up. This might be wasted energy. Yeah, we saw in the short track that many riders blow up. Actually, if yeah. we went too fast, uh, they, they blew all up. So, uh, and also here on, on this course, yeah, if you blow up too early and also the course, the, the climb continues. And here was Alexander Udimo who had that crash, tries to get back in his rhythm and try to get back to the leaders group. I hope he can find his rhythm back. But yeah, you can blow up very easily on a course like this. And especially also when, the, when it's very warm. Yeah, going into that uh, tech feed zone, actually this tech feed zone where the riders are right now, Tom Schellig is in there. That's for the UCI teams and for the national teams. And the, the part where the tents are, that's for the UCI elite teams. Yeah, is that Lugo just uh, going in to take a bottle? Hydration critical today as it is. It is. getting very hot out there now. Yeah. And also here, it's taking, he's taking a gel. And on a climb like this, it's not an easy thing to do at all. And just looking at our commentary booth window and the jump line on the way back in the finish area, these are the 23 men. It's like they're on a day out in the bike park. They're all throwing whips and having fun. Yeah, they're having fun. A group of four now with a small gap. 
Adrian Brashi is in it. Brashi and Lilo, very much the danger men in there. But Shellikins and Zat Lukal will have something to say about it too. Yes, Zat Lukal is looking strong and leading still here on this climb. Not someone that we've been used to seeing at the front of these on the 23 races. Does that make it more difficult as well? Because I'm guessing at this part of the season, Bart, you started to work out who your what your rival strengths are, what they're good at, where you need to mark them. Somebody who's a bit of an unknown quantity can be can that upset the rhythm. Yeah, I mean they will testing each other for sure. Uh, if if you are a strong climber like uh, Sir Lucas is, he shows his strength here on this climb. Uh, yeah, and uh, I think like Dario Lilo, he's a little bit more experienced already, and yeah, he's leading the the series. So there's no pressure oh. for him at all. Foot out flat out from Lilo there. Really Amos, the number 20 on his bike. Really Amos, you love to see that. Feet up, letting both axles just drift out underneath him. But also Adrian Brogy, a very strong young French rider. I mean, even in the short track last Thursday, we didn't see that much from him when it came, till it came down to the last two laps and suddenly he was there and he won the race. Well, we've seen Valley Hole emerge into the sunshine and I can just give you an update. I'm now seeing Cedric Gracia at the corner of my eye emerge into the sunshine of daylight after uh, no doubt a busy evening at the party have followed an absolutely spell-binding day of downhill racing. Go and check out the highlights online. Yeah, with the number 38, Ren Stunis of Oman, another Dutch guy. With the onboard camera in front of him. Jan Zatlukel then for the Czech Republic on that number 13 specialised bike, leads the way. Jellikens. But these riders still close together. Yeah, we saw early on in the women's under-23 race, we saw Sophie Heavy Pedersen basically pull off a vanishing act at the front and disappear. And doesn't look like it's going to be that way in under 23 men's. They are all still together at the front yeah. of this one. Yeah, what we already discussed, the depth of this field, this group is so much bigger. Wilson from New Zealand joining it as well for Team Tally's Kiwi, Kiwi MTB Collective. Excuse me. Yeah, you see the Czech Republic, Switzerland, France, the Netherlands, another Swiss rider, the USA. Proper international field at the front of this yeah. one. 11 New seconds Zealand. back to Solvoy, who is still with Houdima and Riley Bjorn, Bjorn Riley, excuse me. Yeah, Alexander Houdima, we're at that crash, 20 seconds back now. So we lost a little bit of time. I see is the, the knee braced up as well. Yeah, he had an, uh, a small uh, yeah, injury in the beginning of the season and he still likes to ride with it uh, to protect himself and also to uh, avoid more damage. But uh, actually, the injury is over and he feels good with it. Yeah, mountain bike racing, so much of it as well as not only managing, managing injuries but managing the recovery process as well. And just as you say, if something feels good, stick with it. Yeah, sometimes just these little yeah, extras, uh, a brace or some bandage, uh, it, it just helped. We see more often like kinesio tape also on uh, yeah. some of the parts of their body. But John, so look all is looking good. Yeah, blew my shoulder Pushing up. Hard. Blew my shoulder up once and got a load of that tape applied to it and within a couple of hours my skin reacted to it. So then not ah, only did I have a bad shoulder, but I had a massive rash all over where the tape was. Yeah, if you are. Uh, yeah. Good times. It's a great sport. <laughs> Into that second uh, descent and see how rough it is. A lot of roots, a lot of drops in that too. High speed scoring. Look how rough it is. Rough has got down here. Very loose as well. Especially old, this corner over here. An old downhill track and really showing every year of tires skidding down at this section. Lovely as we jump on board the drone. Little drop there, flat out up this little incline. And for the first time, really, in the lap, you get a chance to breathe. But look at the speed they're pushing out down here. The drone can hardly keep up with them. Yeah, especially into these trees. And then back up again. That's it. The fun bit's over. Up you go. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all about climbing. Really aggressive on the bike as well as that local out of the saddle there. Yeah. He does. Dario Lilo, second place. Who else? Who is just following him? Adrian Brogy as well. And Tom Skellig is on his hardtail bike. 
Luke Wittmann, fifth place. That's the Thomas Markson team. Jan Zetlukal from Czech Republic. It's good to see a strong Czech rider again. Of course, with uh, Jaroslav Kulavi, the Olympic champion oh. from some years ago. Now that was a bike rider. Yeah, he, he definitely was. Jaroslav Kulavi competed in the cross country marathon in uh, Nova Mesa Morave earlier in the year. One of the original big men of cross country, wasn't he? Just an absolute he, locomotive he, of a man. <laughs> he won the London uh, right. Olympic Games. Yeah, gold medalist. Gold medalist. He beat Nino Schroeder. Remember an absolute tussle of the muscle between the two of them in Nova Mesto one year that was just one of the best cross-country races I've ever watched. Yeah, on that climb. Kulhavi irresistible in his day. So it's good to see another Swiss, uh, another Czech rider uh, in front of the race now, Jan Zetlukal. He was quite rock and roll as well, wasn't he? He was sponsored by a certain Italian car manufacturer, I remember, as well. <laughs> it's pretty good. You're going pretty <laughs> quick if you get that. <laughs> He came to the races on his Maserati. That's right, yeah. He came to, they brought the car with him. It was quite flash. I liked it. Is that Lukal still at the front? Yeah. Tom Skellig is on fourth place. He lost a few bike lengths on, in that descent. But Boisci looks like he's pushing Lilo yeah. up this climb. Adrian Boisci looking strong. The young French rider. Boisci making a lot of fans in 2023. Super stylish on the bike. Races with his heart on his sleeve. Jan said, look how at the number 13 on his bike. On the number 13 bike, unlucky for some, not for him. Well, he's got a 40 Clover necklace on, so that's sorting that out, keeping it balanced. Keeping the balance. Five of them together on this climb there. Yeah, Luke Wheatman, the last rider in the red jersey. So this is where we saw Zat Lukal take the lead last time out, and he leads him on the bottom of it again. So he's led for a full lap now. I'm just wondering if you let somebody else take a dig at the front now they've separated themselves. I think it, it definitely will help if you are on the second or third place here on a climb like this and also on, on more of the sections of this course. Now we look back over the shoulder for Dario Lilo. Where are your riders? Checking out how they look like. It seems to be uh, now Tom Skellikens is coming to the front again, overtaking some of the riders. But he has to take the grass section also. Oh, Lilo. Lilo does the same. But again, second place for Dario Lilo. So a bit of a reaction there from Lilo. He must realize that Shellikens is a danger man today and needs to be behind him. Yeah, and also, tactically, that's that's the perfect race what he's doing. Yeah. Second place all the time. Not panicking at all. And what Bart means by that, of course, is that you can you can balance your effort versus the, the rider in front of you and then attack whenever you feel strong. Yeah, you, you still uh, can save some energy if you are behind someone. A little bit of a draft. Look at the speed, they accelerate down that to centre. Really? Amos dropping back to ninth now after that strong start as yeah. Nilo manuals that little section again. Just pops the bike up on the back wheel. De Michielse from Belgium. And there's Carter Woods, well back in the pack now. 14 for the big Canadian. Alexander Houdima dropped back. 16 at the moment after that crash he had in the previous lap. Betone as well, yeah, 18. Yeah, back as well. Paul Schell, 19. And Rechtal. Row starts. Rechtal, we thought we'd see him further up there. Yeah, the Norwegian rider. Tom Skellikus with Dario Lilo behind him. What a ride for Tom Skellikus so far. Jansen Lukal now on third place. And then Adrian Brushy, that's a group of four, and it looks like Luke Wittmann is suffering all the time with the leaders and sometimes just a little bit off on these little climbs. Yeah, he's sort of yo yoing back and forth a yeah, wee bit, yeah. isn't he, Wittmann? Another rider. It still in that. is time to ride into the race. He can. He can come yeah. back and I'm feeling better that it comes down to the last few laps but it goes fast today riding for Thomas Maxson of course Ralph Neff at the helm of that one there is that hard tail of Tom Shellikens 
It seems to be working well for him today. Yeah, it is. It'll be a... It can just be that, though, over the course of a race part, just that little bit of extra energy going through the body that can land in the later stages of a race. It's so rare we see a hardtail these days. It is actually really notable, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, most of the courses are so technical. Does, does it make sense to ride hardtail? But sometimes in the younger category, even the, the let's say, yeah, the, the under-17 uh, riders, uh, they still using hardtail bikes. And also for yeah, countries like where I live, the Netherlands, they are actually perfect uh, for hardtail bikes. The trails we have, uh, they're, they're great, uh, great the great hardtail is almost as well. <laughs> the hard, yeah, it gives you some. Um, I, I know from uh, Anna Terpstra, for example, she's training on a hardtail bike also to to improve her okay. skills. Yeah. If, yeah, if no you can do it on a hardtail bike, you easily can do it on a full suspension. No room for mistakes as well on a hardtail. It just it just breeds that kind of ability to to sharpen your reactions and to stay smooth. It looks like even uh, now Luke Wittmann not stressed at all, taking his time for, the, for a drink. And he's back in the leading group. We just saw them all there, that start finish straight, really one of the only places where you can relax enough to get a drink in. Yeah, and you see now, uh, of course, this is the only place where riders can take their hydration, uh, their nutrition that they will take uh, the bottle at least with them because it's uh, yeah, around 12 minutes uh, lap time. That's one of the first times we've seen as well so far riders throwing a bit of water around themselves. The cool down it is heating up here in Lea Gang. Yeah, it's heating up quickly, especially on these part of the parts of the course where, the, where it's open, no trees, no shadow, and the sun is shining, blue sky. Yeah, mercifully, we have been allowed to keep the commentary booth door open yesterday during downhill. It was so loud, we had to close it. And trust me, Bart, when I say it was getting pretty hot in here. Fastest lap times now at the moment. That's probably the 12.06, Joran Braley. Look at that local emerging out of that tech feed zone like a, like a racehorse out of the stalls. Yeah, Bjorn Rayleigh is moving forwards. Sixth place he is now, and when he did have the fastest lap time, it's interesting to follow him, what he's doing. Yeah, Bjorn Riley on that track, future racing squad designed to bring um, bring young racers through onto that full factory team of theirs. And it's a bit of a it's a bit of an internal victory for whenever somebody from the satellite squad beats the, the factory team, isn't it? It is, but it's also good to have a development team. Sometimes, yeah, if you have a mountain bike team with, let's say, six riders, it's quite big already. You need a lot of uh, support uh, for every rider. So it's good to have a development team and riders that can move up to the factory team. Like yeah, uh, track factory, yes. Standout ride for him was, of course, that result in Leger last year, fifth at the Worlds. Bjorn Riley, yeah. somebody with a bright future ahead of them. An interesting follow on social media as well, does a lot of art. National champion from the USA. Under 23. Bit of an eccentric character worth a follow. 15 seconds back, that Jason group. Really pushing hard at the frontier bar. Of yeah, this yeah, That's yeah. one of the steepest parts off the climb there. Actually, the first time that we see Adrian Borges pushing hard. We jump back on board with Barroso Gomez. There's Alexander Hodima from the Ukraine. Okay, number eight on his bike. We drop you back a little see, bit. You can see how uh, how short the tread blocks are in these cross-country racing tires. Designed to uh, offer grip, but not at the expense of added drag. So steep up here. That's the last little punch that really, really lands to the side of the head of this first climb. And look, Wiedmann again, he dropped back a little bit. It's funny, isn't it, Bart? He seems in, in some shots to be right with them, and he drops back three or four bikes, and then he sort of brings it back yeah, to him again. Yeah, I, I think he's suffering a lot. And, but it's Adrian Brogy now, who is pushing hard. You see as well, uh, look, he dropped back a little bit as well. A few bike length for him on the fourth place. He was pushing hard in the previous lap, but now with Adrian Brosi pushing so hard, he has to pay for his effort. Yeah, it's that local. Just being distanced now. Fourth place. Boishi. He's looking strong, Boishi. 
the number two on his bike in the multi-coloured jersey of Trinity Racing. Tom Skalikas, he finished third in uh, Nova Master Namorav in the first round. And now into the first descent. Whoa. Back end that specialized, she's getting kicked out from underneath while she good line there from Shellikins on the hard tail. Yeah, equal in speed, I would say. He didn't much, he didn't lost that much. On that first lap when we saw Riley Amos absolutely plummet down there. I thought maybe the hard tail was the wrong choice, but he seems to be recovering enough and is currently has enough energy reserves to keep things lined up in a straight line. Shellikins on those descents. Jente Michiels now in the tenth place. Help us in the Koenig. Lilo in second behind Boashi. Shellikens at Lugal in fourth for being distance. Back towards Weidman. Wow, now a few bike lengths off for Tom Shellikens. Jans at Lukal, the Czech rider, fourth place. Wow. wow. There you go, that's how you do it. Look at Adrian Brazi. Such a stylish cross-country racer, Boashi. He, he became world champion in the last year as a junior. Jump on board the drone behind Zat Lukal. Great shots here from our drone. It is. Yeah, amazing how fast the drone can follow these riders in between uh, all these trees. Have we lost one yet this season? I don't think we have. I don't think we've I, had. I, a... I heard uh, f from of some of us that the drone uh, crashed once as well, but okay. we haven't seen well, that. Well, we got plenty more of them. But That's I'm not fine. surprised if I see these shots. No, it's it's a, <laughs> definitely a skill, uh, the POV drone. But these days, it, it seems to be the if you replace the blades of the uh, of the drone, it, it go, you can use it again. You can use it again. Yeah, 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 yeah. pretty good. They've worked out that people crash them. So here we have the two at the front then. Washi turning the screw a little bit, only Lilo going with him. Actually, Tom Skellikens and uh, Jan Zatlukal are not that far off. This section's so steep, yeah, again, you can see it's a great shot, actually gives you an idea. You arrive on the bottom of it and you look up and you've got three or four levels to get up to. Washi, Lilo for Scott Davos, MTB Project and Trinity Racing, respectively. Shellikins and Zat Lukal now six seconds back from them. The number two and the number one. Locking horns at the front of this one. And this section, really steep, getting into that yeah. little left-hander. And especially, you're entering the, the highest point and you drop back immediately. There's no time. There's a step to the right-hand side of it that is full commitment yeah, yeah. to get down. Full commitment down, yeah. And no time uh, to relax, uh, no. And that's what we always say. You, have to, you, you reach your highest heart rate on that on that uh, highest point that's of the course. That's what we always say. That you've got to be a good enough descender yeah. to be able to relax on those points yeah. and to recover. There's, there's no time to get into that descent. It's just you have to, to do full commitment to what you said and then yeah, use all your skills you have. And that makes it harder. That yeah, especially your with your heart rate that high. Cross-country Olympic mountain bike race and really coming into its own in terms of the technicality and skills required to win one of these things. Yeah, it looks like now the gaps are opening a little bit in between the riders. Dario Lilo, three seconds off, but yeah, he's coming back again. You can see it on your screen there, yes. Yeah, Shellikens 11 seconds now back off Washi and the punch is being thrown by the Frenchman beginning to land. Yeah, and now on that climb, that long climb, are we going to see Bushi attack up here and distance himself from Lilo now? This camera angle is deceiving. I wonder. The battle in between Bushi and Lilo. Lilo's coming back to him here. Yeah, yeah, he does. Nice rhythm he has. Yeah, clever riding from Lilo, actually. Yeah, not blowing up, but just slowly coming back to the front to the first place. Is it possible for Tom Skellikens as well to close that gap? And also Jan Zatlukal, now he's back with uh, Tom Skellikens on the fourth place. And now we have Luke, Mann, uh, Luke Wiedman on, uh, on his own, on the fifth place. Luke Wiedman struggling to keep pace here, 29 seconds back now. Boashi for Trinity Racing. But it's good to see uh, Adrian Brasi 
pushing so hard, he's feeling strong. Out of the saddle on that last little bit of the climb, that, that's very steep here. But then there's a little bit of time to relax, that flowy descent. Also for Tom Skellikens, he's still looking strong. He is, isn't he? 11 seconds back, not that much. Not that much from Skellikens. Nope. Wiedmann, 25 seconds, on, back on the fifth place. There's Bjorn Riley and the Stars and Stripes of the United States of America at the front of that little group. Yeah, and then Oliver Solvo, and then we have uh, Jens Michiels already. Jens Michiels having a good day. Yeah, ninth place. I think he's on eight already. Jens Michiels, yes, eight place, and then we have Wilson here, Matthew Wilson in the right kit. So voice hanging in here, you know, Bart, in seventh. He went backwards at the start, but he seems to have... Uh, yeah, Mikhail's in eighth, having started in 51st, so... What a white. Yeah, good day at the office so far. Yeah. And Mario Beer from Austria. Good ride for him. We rejoin the leaders at the front then. 14th place at the moment. Still Boashi and Lilo out front though. Yeah, the battle uh, between these two. This is developing into a fascinating race. Nothing in between these two. Nope, just as we've seen all season, very little to choose between these two. Boashi won that first short track of the year. There he is, there yeah, Timmy Hills from Belgium, Alpecin de Koenig. Yeah, really impressive ride. Teammate of uh, Mathieu van der Poel, Buk Petersen, strong not, team. Not bad teammates to have. Wondering what Pick Peters can do uh, today. Pop Peters uh, in action. At such a young age. She Later is. on, currently leads the cross country overall rankings by just nine points. Will she leave here in Lea Gang with that overall title leader's jersey as well? Dario Lilo just popping the bike through those jumps. Washi fast through that uh, little descent through the corners and jumps so far. It's pulled a couple of bikes from them. But only 11 seconds in between these two and the chasing group. The gap stays the same. 24 to the fifth place. Interesting, especially now they will take their time for a drink, probably. Yep, Washi going for a drink. Yeah, it's necessary. It's to just take. about the only place on this lap where you can yeah, get one. Yeah, it is. Yeah, on, on these climbs, it's not possible to drink at all. You need your breathing into that feet tone. Also for Tom Skellikens, a gel. So first a bottle with energy drink, and then probably a bottle to cool down. Oh, just you see, yeah, these, up there. These, these turns are so slippery. It's just loose everywhere, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, loose everywhere, yeah, it's dry. And that gravel makes it very slippery. Sat Lukal in fourth now, 27 seconds back off Boashi. That's the gap in between the leaders and Tom Skellikus, who's on third place. Here we go, some great yep. shots, slow mo shots of these cross country race bikes in action. Trinity team. Trinity Racing Mountain Bike Team. They do a great job in making some really, really attractive, bright race bikes and race kit. Crucially for me though, Bart, you know what I'm going to say, Boashi, white shoes, white socks. Stylish. Premium. <laughs> Premium. Actually, the Trinity team is the development team of the Specialized yeah. Factory team. Yeah. So plenty of young, young talent coming through there. Uh, one Tom Pitcock came through that squad as well. Pitcock, of course, one of the best all-rounders on the planet, if yeah. not the best at the minute. I hope to see him back uh, soon, but I heard he's doing Tour de France, so... Uh, it's yeah, doing a little regional bike race in France. We mightn't see him on the mountain bike for a while, <laughs> but... Yeah, Certainly he won the first round, Nova Mesta and Amarave. Did the double in Nova Mesta and Amarave in the Czech Republic at the start of the year. And here was Tom Skellikens in third place, 15 seconds off, but he's on his own. 
He dropped Jan Zadlukal again. Yeah, Zadlukal's stock looks like it's faded now. He may well have blown up slightly after that. Heavy effort. He still can see the leaders in front of him. Yeah, Shelly can swipe him to ride himself back across here, but this is the steep, one of the steepest parts of yeah, the climb. Only if they slow down. Which here is Jan Zadlukal, and then we have Luke Wittmann behind him. Luke Wittmann just getting a drink. Feeling the heat out there. Who can blame him? 30 seconds now is that Luke old behind Boishi. This Wiedman. race goes so fast. Wittmann looked like he's riding himself back across there to the, the check. Yeah. These two welded together, but it's Lilo in front now. There is Jante Michels from Belgium. Number 51 on his bike. Bjorn Reilly, Bjorn Reilly with him. Yeah, Bjorn Reilly with him, yeah. Could the two of these men have something to say about the podium? Lilo now. Just taking a turn at the front up the steepest part of this course, the very top of this climb. Miserably steep up there. It is, it is. Yeah, it's a mental game also between these two. The numbers one and two, there's nothing in between these uh, riders. So a uh, mental game definitely will play a big role in this race. Different positions now for the numbers one and two. And for both, it's a hard part of the course. It's and they so might slow down a little bit and try to save some energy when it came, comes down to the last lap. I don't know, this is on the 23 men's race. I don't know if they slow down. <laughs> if they'll slow down, they might just keep swinging at each other here on the number one and number two bikes. Also, the lap times, they go even faster. Adrian Brochy now the fastest lap time. 11 minutes, 57 seconds, just below 12 minutes. But just behind them, only two seconds. Second fastest lap, guess who? Dario Lilo, who leads the race now through this really choppy route section. Concentration in the face of Dario Lido with the leader's jersey. The number one on his bike. Nice tidy cockpit there. Yeah. From the Dafo Gloucester's area in Switzerland. Lilo, you were saying, has spent some time on the road as well. Yeah, they do. So, as we've seen across mountain biking, more and more mixing up of formats and disciplines. It's all about bike racing, less about what kind of bike it is these days. Lilo, Boishi, Shelikin, Satlukal, Vidman, Michels, Riley, Solvoy, Wilson and Bear. Mario Bear, the yeah. Austrian rider on 10th place. Well, the, Aust future race. the Austrians had enough to shout about in the downhill yesterday. Can Bear ride his way into this one and give him something else to shout about in the cross country Olympic? the descent with the drone behind them. Tom Schellekens, third place. Miss Hartel, a little bit further down. Lilo now, up that technical little punch. Yeah, the gaps stay more like the same. He doesn't lost that much from Skellikers on third place. This one feeling like it's building up nicely to be a last lap slope fest. And luckily it's dry for these riders, otherwise it becomes very slippery, these routes. The track looks good up there. Yeah, actually. it looks really nice. Looks like there's it. enough moisture to keep it together. It's still running fast. Hard to say who's the strongest of these two. Yeah. They both look in great form. Yeah. We know that uh, Boisy, he's strong when it comes down to like a real punchy acceleration in what we have seen in short track a couple of times. 
And it comes down to the last lap. But Dario Lillo, constantly very strong, powerful. That's maybe a little bit more experience. I just fancy, I just fancy was she through that technical descent, those off camber turns and the jump line. He looks, he's been looking very fast every lap through there so far. I just wonder if he could maybe throw it all at the wall and come out with a time gap. If it does go to a last lap, decider, the uh, the finish straight here, very, very short. So not much room for a sprint, but equally not very, really, loo very no. loose as well. Yeah, actually that last turn just before the finish line, I think it's only a 50 meters to the finish line from the last turn. Yeah, yeah you have to be very fast on your arm, it has to be very slow, but it's almost yeah, too difficult to overtake each other. Did you jump on board again. And the camera is on the on the bike of uh, Alberto Barroso from Spain. Going really well as well, Barroso. By the look at things. Barroso in 19, so he's inside the top 20. That was a Norwegian. Well, he's still got a rectal behind him. An hour. <laughs> Let's see who they are discussing. Yeah. Who has to take the lead? Well, we heard in the under 23 women's race that um, second and third place had a bit of a conversation as well mid race, but. <laughs> I don't know if there's a little bit of maybe headwind here on this climb. Can't At least they didn't much. like to do the work. Can't see too much movement in those banners up there, but... These are the numbers uh, four and five in the race. Yeah, is that Luke who's holding yeah, on? Yes, that Luke Hull with uh, Luke Wittmann, and then Tom Skellig is a little bit in front of them on his own. There he is in the white jersey, riding for the national team uh, in this race. Here he is, Tom Schellekes with the number six on his back. On his heart hill. Stylish here on this course in Leo Gang. Let's see the suspension, how it's working. Full in. You can see that back wheel getting battered around behind him. Top of this climb then, it is Lilo. Only a second back to Boashi. Yeah, Luke Wiedmann is looking strong again. Now in fourth place with the number seven on his bike. It's been fascinating this race. Wiedmann, he goes from looking like he's, he's blown his doors off to looking really strong to looking like he's blown again. To yeah. Coming back. Can you have days like that, Bart? Where yeah, you, 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 you can have it like that. If you take a gel, sometimes you awake, certainly, and then ride, it, ride yourself into the race again. Here he is, the Luke Wittmann. Not that far off, second 10 seconds back, yeah. Yeah, for the podium. Is that Luke Holtz behind him now? That's a nice view too from here, from the swimming pool. Finn Isles then, in the middle. Canadian downhill star, had a good day at the office yesterday. Watching his teammate Carter Woods, no doubt. Teammate, sorry, compatriot. Carter Woods, the national champ, back in fourth Canada. 14 for the winner for Carter Woods. A lot of climbing though for a rider as big as Carter. Yeah, he's, str he's super strong, but uh, maybe there's too much climbing involved uh, on this course for him. Yeah, part of weight in cross country Olympic mountain biking is everything when it comes to climbing, and these two out front. Jente Michiel's now on sixth place. The Belgian rider, 57 sec seconds back. So as the leaders come into view off the commentary booth in the least big, wide, fast off camber turns that lead them back down towards the finish area. Foot off for Dario Lilo. Yep, a foot out. Jenny Risford's taken out by these turns in the short track. There's Lloyd no, Bruni. Yeah. Never not looking cool. The downhillers, the work was done yesterday. Time to relax. Yeah, enjoying their day off. Tell you what, Bart, am I going to pull myself later on, having just seen? Doesn't look bad, does it? When do we have time? Oh, no, well, none. <laughs> we don't have time, no. Maybe we can commentate from the pool. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, there was enough water in this commentary booth on Friday <laughs> that it nearly was a swimming pool, but... Yeah, big rain here in Austria on Friday, but... Perfect conditions today, actually warm. We expect 28 degrees this afternoon. Woofed. Yeah, no, I'll be in the pool. Oh. One more lap, the final lap if it crossed the finish line, and that's almost. 
Dario Lilo, Adrian Brushy, Switzerland against France. There's nothing in between these two riders. Nope. This has gone to the last lap then, Shellikens. On third place. Third place, good ride for him, but hopes of a win evaporating. In the heat here in Lea Gang. New bottles for these two. Taking the feet. From Shellikens, here he is. 26. 26 seconds off. Wearing the Machu van der Poel glasses of Oakley. Yeah. It's not a bad shot, is it? If oh. you're going to go fast, you wear the van der Poel ones. <laughs> Machu van der Poel, one of the biggest stars in cycling and world sport at the minute. We will see him on a cross-country race bike at the UCI World Championships in Glentress in Scotland later in the summer. As he makes a bid to qualify for the Paris Olympics in 2024. Let's see how fast these guys are going here on this climb. Out of the saddle for... Here we go. Dario Lilo. Is this an attack? It's business time now at the bottom of the first big, big climb of this big, big lap. At, le at least he's pushing the hammer down, but Adrian Brogy is still there. I look back over his shoulder, and yes, he is there. Which one of these two riders do you want to be at the minute bar? I think Dario Lilo is looking really strong to me. He has the experience. And he will try and get away of Adrian Brogy again. Okay, you can I think be... Adrian Brogy, he has, uh, he has more pinchy uh, yeah. attack if it comes down to the finish. Okay, you can go Lilo, I'll go Boishy then. White shoes, white socks, can't look past it. Boishy has impressed so much this season. Yep. Second wheel at the minute on that pink specialized S-Works bike. You get the feeling that he needs to live with Lilo on this first climb. Lilo will dictate the first half of this lap, then Washi may get a chance to counter punch on the second bit. Yeah, he has to survive here on this part, a very steep part of the course. And then it goes slightly flat a little bit in that climb, and then it goes even more steeper. And you see how loose it is. There's just one line where the gravel is gone, where the, where the, the riders can find their grip. It's here. Dario Lilo, how hard he's pushing to drop Adrian Brasi. Does it work out for him? I don't know, there's Shellikins casting a lonely shadow behind them, but no, they're still together at the front. Still together, Mario Beer now, the Austrian rider on ninth place. Bjorn Reilly on sixth, they, he switched positions with Jente Michiels. Great ride from Bjorn Reilly. Also track future racing team. They are based in the uh, Heiming area, Austria. Ah, OK. So technically a home race for the American then. In yeah, terms he's of the living squad. most of the time here in Austria, it's true. Lilo Washi, who is going to come out on top at the end of this one then. Interesting. Up the first climb together. Yeah, there's nothing in between these two. But another very steep section here in the last bit of that climb. Small gear. High cadence. Looks like Boishy is having to put a bit of an effort in here to stay with Lilo. Fascinating race, this one. Cat and mouse threw out these two, inseparable, yep. welded together. They weathered the attacks of Zat Lukel earlier on together. They've remained together ever since, but there can only be one winner. Yeah, a little bit of time. To relax, uh, foot out. Yeah, it's going too slow or too close to each other. Quite the descent now. There is Shellikins heading towards the top. Not that far off them. 25 seconds. No, of the, no. If these two do, were to uh, take each other out. Down through this really choppy descent, still together. Yeah, for Luke Wittmann, it's going to be difficult to reach the podium. 34 seconds off. Good ride from Vidman, though. He's impressed me. He's stuck at it. Oh, 
Lilo Idol is yeah, saddled again, there. Again, a little yeah, acceleration. He's accelerating everywhere. Checked over his shoulder as soon as he sat back down again to see if it had been enough. What a confidence boost for either of these two riders a win would be as we head into the second half of the season. Yeah, definitely a very fast last lap. Always good to beat your title rival toe to toe, isn't it? It is. <laughs> yeah. As they head into the descent now. Lilo fast here. Stylish. Yep. To this descent. Feet up. Looking good. So is Boishi. Not far behind him. There's just maybe half a bike has opened up, but Boishi quick to close it out. Tricky to follow another bike in the descent as well. So easy to make the same mistake as the rider in front of you. Nine seconds in between uh, Skellicus and Wiedmann. I said yeah. 34, but it's of course, that's to the first place. So, last still place possible the, for Wiedmann. Last spot on the podium still open. Yep. Now Lilo. Out the saddle, punches up into this next climb. Yeah, he's testing him everywhere. On the every uphill section of, the, of this course. Maybe he knows that Boishi is strong in those descents and he can't afford to take any risks of heading on to the final one with him in two. Already a fascinating oh, I day. I see. Oh, also strong. Cadence. So high in between these turns all the time. Accelerating everywhere. Already a fascinating day of cross-country Olympic racing so far here in Leergang in Austria, but plenty more to come when the elites what? will go Look, toe to toe. is coming close to Skellikens. So we could see a battle for third now as well. Yep. Bar to bar combat here in Leergang. As the cross-country Olympic day gets underway with the under 23 women this morning and the under 23 men on your screens now. We head into the elite races later on this afternoon. That's why Tom Skalikas is pushing so hard. Only four seconds in between the numbers three and four. He's There's Luke Wiedmann in the red kit. Yeah, he's seen him. That's the problem with the red jersey. It's very easy to spot when it comes <laughs> to the end of a race. And he's on a full suspension bike. Skalikas on his hardtail bike. Look yeah, at they have to take the descent now. Boishi is Drop all me. over the back of Dario Lilo like a cheap suit as they come out of the trees and into the open. Yeah. What are they going to do? Slowing down. This next climb, we did say it at the start, the really, really straight climb underneath the ski lift line. They both like to win this they, race. They would both love to take a win here. Shellikins, now where's Vidman? There he is in the red jersey. Yeah, he's coming so close. Come on, really impressive second half of the race from Vidman. Yeah, yeah, so strong. He wrote himself definitely into the race. So, big drink for Lilo, chucks the bottle. Yeah, no extra weight on his bike. That's the sort of margins we and are This is the about. battle for the third place, the last spot on the podium. This will be an absolute tussle of the muscle, two big men going at it here. And we can see the two battles for the podium places. Interesting. Yeah, all right, there is Adrian Brasino. Adrian Brasino to the front, attacks. Lilo, can he go with him? Wow, look at this. Look at the effort being put oh, by yes. Lilo it's sits up. Look at Adrian Brasi. Lilo sits up, he doesn't want anything to do with this attack. He's got no answers for Brasi here. Brasi for Trinity Racing MTB. Is he making the race winning move in front of our eyes up this climb? This is so fast. Oh, Brasi. If he looks back over his shoulder right now, he knows. He'll see him here, look, yep, what has he a did. little look. Lilo. Do you know what, Bart? Mentally I've, broken, I'm sure. I think that was a speculative <laughs> one that ended up sticking. I think he was trying to soften them up and he saw that he had no answers and he kept going. Wow. See the gap in such a short distance. Wow, so Lilo must have played all his cards in the first half of the lap and Boishi. We've, we've seen something from much here oh. on the pool similar, but what Adrian Brasi does like this, I've never seen that before. And now Veidman uh, attacks Shellikens. Right, he's going to mug him right at the top of the climb, looks over the shoulder. The battle for the third place. A <laughs> massive cowbell being dragged up that hill. <laughs> oh, look, Veidman is to get his deer. Oh, Veidman. 
Shellikins, I'm not sure if he's got any answers for Vidman. Look at the gap he's opened up on him and he pumps through that descent to try and maximize it. The riders, they know exactly where they have to attack, which position they have to be when it comes down to the last few hundred meters before Thir the finish. 13 seconds now, the gap. Boisie not amazing. looking back. He's in, putting himself in prime position to do the double. Yeah, Adrian Boisie, he was uh, following uh, Dario Lilo all the time. Lilo was pushing hard on every climb, but when it came down to the last climb, Absolutely no answers. No answer. What a display from Boashi. What? Yeah. Again, just as we've seen Sophie Heavy Patterson making a name for herself in the elite, in the, sorry, excuse me, the under 23 women's ranks, Adrian Boashi is becoming the name on everyone's lips here in the under 23 men's. Looks over. He'll like what he sees behind him. Plenty of clear air. 13 seconds. Look, Whitman. Third, Skellikas, it says or fourth together, but I don't think so. I'll be honest with you, Bar. I thought these two would be right together come this stage of the race, but Boashi's attack was absolutely superb. Will the elite racers be looking at that and think, maybe, just maybe I can probably go there as well? Probably they will be informed uh, by uh, the staff people, probably the, the, you know, maybe they have time to, to, to watch this race, yeah. They are laying down on their beds, waiting for the race at 3.30 this afternoon. Many leads. Yeah. But actually, I'm wondering uh, if this is correct. Uh, the, the battle between the numbers three and four, Luke Wittmann, Tom Skellikens, because we saw the attack of Luke Wittmann, and he had a small gap. But now Adrian Boisie coming Adrian to the finish line. Boisie, the Adrian Boisie heads to the line for Trinity Racing. An absolutely superb performance from the young Frenchman. He does the double in Gang. Adrian Boisie sits up and celebrates the UCI mountain bike cross country Olympic under 23 men's victory going the same way as the short track World Cup. Dario Lilu pops the bike up on the back wheel to celebrate with a wheelie. Ultimately, ultimately couldn't stick with Boashi today. Let's just see these two congratulate each other now. Yeah, Lilu gracious in defeat, but what a display from Boashi. Luke Veidman. Hung in there in the first half of this race and only got better as the race went on. The Swiss rider crosses the line in third place. Big result for him today ahead of yeah. Tom Schellikens. Tom Schellikens for place, but what is a strong second part of the race for Luke Wittmann, who finished third. And Schellikens for place. 42 seconds back, Schellikens gives you an idea of how hard Boishi went to the front. Friedman happy with that. It's well he should be. Yeah, podium. Behind them then, fifth place goes to this man, a superb ride. Bjorn Riley. Bjorn Riley. From Trek Future Racing. Getting it done. Mikhail's from 51st place on the start grid. To a sixth. One of the biggest rides of the year, that. Yeah. Oliver Solvoy crosses the line. Yeah, McHale's absolutely superb for Alpeson de Koenig. Jan Zanluk Hall on eight. Jan Zanluk all rewarded for all those early Here is Mario efforts. Bear from Austria. Mario Bear, the highest finishing Austrian then. Another track future racing rider. Wilson coming in. Look at Boise. Yeah. Carter Woods then 12th. Not his day, but he always kind of felt maybe not his course either. Probably not his course. Look more. Yeah, yeah, South yeah. Africa. Good result for him. Well, Andreas Fitone. we knew that was going to be an exciting one, and so it was. The battle at the front. Once Boishi attacked on that climb, though, Lilo 
It just goes to show Lilo, up until that point, completely poker face. We, we thought he had plenty more left in the tank, and then once, once Boishi went past no, him... But he was answering all the attacks of uh, Lilo, actually, in that last yeah. lap. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but <laughs> the way how you... You can actually see... And here see we see that again. I mean, Lilo knew that he should have co that he should come, and he did it, but he was trying and going with it, but then he sit down and then he knows there's one, this is way too fast, way too fast. There's one pedal stroke here where you see him just sit up and he knew that that was it. It was gone yeah. away from him. Impressive uh, the way how he attacked on that climb. Clever as well. Clever bike racing yeah, from Boishi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Finn Isles likes what he saw. Specialised teammates, of course. Always happy to see the big red S on top. Yeah, he won the short track and won the cross country. Washi over the jumps to finish. Yeah, that's what uh, these young guys do these days. Style points as well. Not just about purely going fast. Fast is fun and fun is fast. Well, let's get the results then. Adrian Washi for Trinity, Trinity Racing takes the win. 12 seconds up the road from Dario Lilo, Vedeman, Shellikins, Riley, Mikkels. Unbelievable ride from him. Solvoy, Zat Lukel. Carter Woods in 12, Mattis Gay. Two minutes 21 back ahead of Moyer, Vittoni, Blackmore in 17. Adrien Boisige, congratulations. You've done the double here this weekend in Liagang. What came together? I don't really know, to be honest. It just feels like I'm getting better and better day by day, races by races. I gain experience and and all that, and yeah, today, to be honest, yesterday I crashed really hard in training. And this morning when I woke up and I couldn't, I could barely get off my bed, I was thinking I'm never going to race, you know, like. But then I just, yeah, I did my warm up. I felt that I had good legs and I just, yeah, trusted what all the, all the training I've done, everything I've done so far in my life to, to that point. And yeah, unbelievable, really. Tell us about that attack on Dario. How did you time it? When did you know it was the right moment to really attack on that climb? I know I've got a kick on me, so I'm never going to drop anyone with one pace. So it's how in we races, just waiting, 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 and doing one attack as hard as I can. And uh, to be honest, I felt so good doing the wrong race. But in the fourth lap, I started to struggle. And I was thinking, oh, he's going to crack me. but. I guess he didn't have more than me. And he was just in the head, you know, like trying to believe in me and think that I could make it. And then you just have to trust in what you do. And I attacked as hard as I could. I was seeing the top and thinking it was my finish line. And yeah, unbelievable, really. Well, congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. Go then, a young man with a very, very <coughs> clever bike racing head on his shoulders. He knows he's got one kick and he knows he has to play his cards when he has to play them. And he did it on the right moment. He did, yeah, that's the hard bit. Yeah, and also the, the story, he had a crash yesterday. Uh, he didn't feel well this morning, even he, he wasn't... He didn't know if he could start a race and then suddenly... But the old saying goes, isn't it? A bad dress rehearsal equals a good performance. Oh. And here the discussion uh, about these two, who uh, was uh, doing the work, but when he came down to the last climb uh, of the course of the race, this attack, it was more than an attack. Everything he got... I'd love to know what, they said, to, what they said to each other. I'd love to know what was said there. Wow, so impressive. The yeah. fast attack. Really mature bike racer's head on his shoulders as well. Really, you get the feeling that he was always in control of that one. Adrian Boishi. Dario, second here in cross country at Lear Gang. A fantastic result for you after a very intense race. Take us through it. Yeah, it was uh, was special, uh, especially after the, the short track on Thursday. 
Uh, I, I wasn't feeling that good, so uh, yeah, I just tried to recover as good for, for the race today. And then, yeah, we were quite a big group as, as all the races this season. So I just tried to, to stay calm, like always stay a little bit in the second position to like have the control over the race. And yeah, then uh, the group got smaller and smaller. And yeah, I was feeling good. Then uh, I knew that probably Adrien and, and me were the, the strongest two. And yeah, it came, came down to, to a showdown in the last lap. And yeah, he was a little bit stronger in the end, but uh, yeah, it's nice for him to, to get his first World Cup victory. And for me, yeah, it's also nice. The, the second place and some good points in the overall, so I'm happy with today. Fantastic, congratulations. We need to give Dario Lilo a job as a race pundit. He always manages to sum it up exactly as it happened. The, the Swissman second then, ahead of his compatriot, Luke Wiedemann. Yeah, two spheres on the podium. A new generation is coming. You just get that sense of maturity about Lilo as well, that he knows that the overall is looking good and... Yeah, sometimes there's more in their mind uh, what plays uh, their, 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 their role in, their, in a race, their tactics. And of course, uh, second place was good. He yeah, of course, he likes to win. He did it last week in Landsrijd. Luke, congratulations. You made it to the podium. Third place here in Leergang. A tough race, but you managed to have the upper hand on Tom. Whereabouts on the track did you do it? And at what moment did you know it was good time to attack? Well, I suffered from the start on. I was maybe fifth and then I lost the front group. But after that, I found my rhythm and I, yeah, I paced really hard. And then I saw Tom. And then on the on the long climb, I attacked the all-out attack, and yeah, full goes to the to the finish line. Yeah. So how was the course this morning? I mean, it's only the morning. The heat is very hot here, uh, very dry track. How hard was that for you? Well, yeah, it was really hot, and the climbs are so steep, and no wind, and yeah, I suffered a lot. Yeah. It was a fantastic result. Congratulations. Thank you. There we have it then, Luke Vidman, more than happy with that one. Vidman, the race threatened to get away from him a couple of times, but he refused to let it go. Thomas Maxson rider. Absolutely superb. Well, let's see the highlights then of an absolutely spellbinding under 23 cross country Olympic World Cup race. And it was predictably flat out from the start. Carter Woods in the middle of your screen. In the Canadian national champions jersey. Riley Amos as well, another rider looking to make a stick over a race distance, moved himself into a good position. Tom Shellikins on his hard tail, did some work at the front. That Lukel also had a good go, the Czech rider. And as the heat intensified, Adrian Boishy and Dario Lilo established themselves at the front. Well, she looks so measured for you. Extremely steep climbs here in Leo Gang. Dispatched one after another by these two at the front. And this was the race winning move then. Adrian Boishy just stood on the pedals, tapped on the gas, and ultimately broke Dario Lilo. You could just see there where the race got away from him. One of the most exciting young talents in cross country racing. Does the double in Leo Gang. 
two wins to the good this weekend for Adrian Boashi. Here are those time gaps then. Boashi, 12 seconds. 38 back to Luke Friedman. Shellikens, Briley, Michels. What a ride for Michels. First he started. Riley Amos back in 27th there again. Race got away from him. As we join them behind the podium. Getting ready to get the awards underway. Two Swiss and a Frenchman. Luke Vidman. Third place today. And he won't have many more hard fought podiums than that one. He really threatened to fall off the back of the group. Time and time again, but kept bringing it back, kept swinging at it, and was rewarded for his efforts with a podium finish here for Thomas Maxson. Dario Lillo, the Swiss national champion. Seen by many as the next big Swiss star, but had to settle for second place today. And then this man, Adrian Boishi, then does the double in Leah Gang for Trinity Racing. Washi won the short track on Friday evening and has won the cross country Olympic for the under 23 men's on Sunday. Washi, a class, class act. And on the caliber of that race today, the future of cross country Olympic racing is bright. Champagne shards to get your Sunday morning going. Doesn't get much better. Great bike racing here in Leogang and plenty more of it to come in the elite races, which will follow imminently. Let's check out how they stacked up then. Boishi, Lilo, Vidman, Shellikins, Riley, Mikkels, Solvoy. Sat Lukel, Bear, and Wilson, your top 10. Won't be long now until we do get the elite women's racing underway here. But before that, it's time to award this man a rather special jersey. The one they're all chasing.
Dario Lilo takes the overall leader jersey. Jersey here arrived here in Austria in. No one is going to leave it in as well. We had the Val de Sole in Italy next. A challenging track that is. What the plaudits go to Lilo. Let's check out shortly then how those overall standings look. Lilo from Boishi, just 41 points in it now. Carter Woods is in third place, but a bit further back. Solvoy, Vidman, Shalikins, Riley, Zatluko, Vitoni, Pushar. So coming next at one o'clock Central European time, the elite women's cross country Olympic. We've had an exciting morning of under 23 racing here at the UCI Mountain Bike Cross Country Olympic World Cup. It's time for the big guns, it's time for the elites to take center stage at one o'clock. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to tune back in. We'll see you there.